I think Sean McDermott is starting to get frustrated with where he is, where this team is offensively, specifically heading into week seven. Yeah, there's a lot of all pro offensive coordinators out there watching the games, right? A lot of, a lot of quarterbacks in the stands that think that they know what they're doing too, so. Buffalo Plus, your interactive look at the week in football, brought to you by Connors and Ferris. All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel presented by Connors and Ferris. Dan Fates, I am Jenna Cottrell. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our work, as well as share it with friends if you think they would enjoy as well. All right, we're talking about Bills with a walkthrough today. Yep. Josh Allen, we talked a little bit about his shoulder injury we yes. talked about it after the game on Sunday Josh says he's feeling good uh look Josh is going to play on Sunday yeah. but what do you make of this injury and what it could mean for the Bills well it's a lengthy injury report for most of the team at yeah. Oliver Kyer Elam Dane Jackson um we're not on the injury list we're like the only two that yes. that aren't because Dawson Knox Dalton Kincaid all of these things Quentin Morris it's a lengthy list look Josh is going to play on Sunday I think a lot of these guys are going to play on Sunday but it is, it is something because it is Josh's throwing shoulder. Yeah. Um, we know what happened last season with his injured elbow. Yeah. Um, Josh pretty much said it's a pain tolerance thing. Um, they'll take it in classic Sean McDermott fashion, day by day. Day by day. Aren't um, we all? Yes. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's, it's something just to see where it goes. Um, and, but he wasn't too injured to throw his shoulder into a fight against the Giants offensive or defensive lineman, so I yeah. think he'll be fine. That's the thing. I, I think it's a concern when Josh talked about the fact that it is a pain management type of issue that's obviously makes your you know your ears kind of yeah. clue in a little bit more. But at the same point, doing something like that, we've all been injured before. Mm -hmm. You're not running your shoulder into somebody. If he went shoulder first. He went shoulder first. So I, that's kind of what gives me the pause of like, mm, okay. It's something to monitor absolutely when your starting quarterback has a shoulder injury on his throwing arm. I guess I'm not – over the moon, anticipating it to affect him. No, this could be something though that if it'll be another excuse if the offense doesn't play well. That's fair. It'll be another thing it's if not the offense. Fair, but that could it, be it'll a be scapegoat. It'll be the jet lag. It'll be the time. It'll be one of these things. It'll be well. Josh had an injured, injured shoulder. So we we, we get. Let's see how he plays. Um, they've been continuing to manage um, their practices. This yes. is the second Wednesday in a row that they have had a walkthrough, a, a lighter practice, no pads, media is not allowed to film any of it. Um, and Sean McDermott said that's pretty much just trying to get back on a schedule, coming back after London. Then they have the shorter week. Yeah. Um, then you play Sunday night, and then they play Sunday on the road, and then they're going to play Thursday. So they are kind of jumbling around the schedule a little bit. Yeah. Two, again, with, with guys that have been banged up. Yeah, I, I mean, it makes sense. Your team is kind of reeling with injuries. You're coming off some big travel. You have a weird week or you're, you know, still getting adjusted. It makes sense to me to do a walkthrough. That, to me, was not shocking. No. It, I feel like the Bills, they're kind of listening, especially with how injured they have been, just maybe taking it. I don't want to say easy, but you're being smart about your approach yeah. and not maybe doing as much physically as you should, not should, but, like, you could do, <clears throat> be doing more, but this makes sense in this moment to kind of pull back. It's a long season. It is a long season, and you bring up their schedule. It is kind of a lot going on mm -hmm. in terms of London, then a Sunday. Okay, Sunday, 1 p.m., it was a night game. Goodbye, 1 o'clock games. This is like our farewell to 1 o'clock games. I know. I'm kind of sad. Wolverine looking at the picture <laughs> on the bed. Bills Mafia and 1 p.m. football games. All right, you talk a lot about the injuries, too. So Dalton Kincaid passed or cleared concussion right. protocol, so that is big. Damien Harris is in concussion protocol. Along with the neck injury, Sean McDermott would not get into whether or not where Harris was. They said obviously he wasn't yeah. in the hospital, but he didn't say whether he was with the team or not. Yeah. Dawson Knox has a wrist. Ed, he actually has two. He has two. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Ed <laughs> Oliver has ten toes. One of them is injured. <laughs> um, Kyer Elam is dealing with an ankle. Yes. Um, that came up. That, po um, that popped up, yeah. Who else is injured? Well, Dane Jackson did have a foot. Dane Jackson with a foot. I'm trying to think who else. Spencer Brown left the game, came the back game. in. Yeah. Quentin Morris has an ankle. He's got two of them. 
I'm sorry. I just love when people say that he, <laughs> the injury designation is just he has a wrist. Well, he actually has two, but I, I get it. Um, yeah, there's a there's a long list. I feel like that's a dad joke. You should appreciate that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Whatever. I'm just not appreciated. <laughs> um, <laughs> injuries, something to monitor yep. for this team. I think it's good. Dalton Kincaid clearing concussion yep. protocol. The one concern for me really is having Ed Oliver kind of yep. pop up with a toe issue. That's something that we're, we'll continue to monitor. Yep. Um, let's talk a little bit, though, about the offense. Not I thought good. not great. You had the acronym that Sean McDermott created. Catter? <laughs> is, that what, is that Bo Body? Bo Body. Bo uh, Body. Bo Body. What does the first B stand for? What are we doing? We're making acronyms. Okay. What does the first B stand for? Um, business. I like it. Business. Good, Kevin. All right. The O. Bo Body. Uh, Catter. Yeah, he talked about consistency. Adapting. Right? We're going to clip this. <laughs> this is great TV. Oh, hold on, let me guess. Consistency, adapting. Uh, is the next word D? Is it D? I was gonna say, just look on your Twitter. We got it. Consistency, oh. approach, detail, execution, and rhythm. Got it. Catter. Catter. Consistency. As, as Creed would say. Yes. Um, I think all these things make sense, and all these things we've been kind of lacking from the Bills' offense. I think Sean McDermott is starting to get frustrated with where he is, where this team is offensively, specifically heading into week seven. Yeah. Um, God, it's very telling when Sean was asked about, do you need to get Deontay Hardy more involved? Uh, for weeks it's been, you got to get somebody else besides Stefan Diggs the ball. And he's pretty much saying, we need to figure out what we do well. Yeah. I think it's just about – Hey, we're in, going into week seven now. We should know some of these guys and what they do best and the roles that they're going to play and the positions they're going to they're going to occupy for us. And it's putting them um, in those positions so that we can be the best offense we can become. But to get into a rhythm, it takes um, a certain approach and a certain level of, of detail to get the execution we need so that you can get into a rhythm. And And we just haven't had that level of execution and that has affected our rhythm when you when you come off the field after after an early third down or three and out it's hard to get into a rhythm so it's about establishing a rhythm through through execution um, we've done it at times we've flashed that at times in different instances different games uh, or parts of different games as well and um, you know I'm excited because I know what we're capable of you watch the Miami game you watch the the Raiders game and um, so it's there it's been there it's just we've got to find that um, every year, whether it's defensively, offensively, or special teams, through the course of a season, you have to continue to evolve um, as the team evolves and as the year evolves. And people get to knowing who you are and how they want to defend you. And then it's trying to stay a step ahead um, all the while. Shots fired, yeah. I, I, I think a little bit. Just understanding, we went through a whole offseason. This is Ken Dorsey's second season. We brought in pieces because you knew what they did well, and that's why you brought them into. Do what they did well here. <laughs> Accentuate and bring them in and, and, and raise up their ability with your coaching. Yeah. And, and your playmakers. Yes. And it's Josh Allen. And the anticipation and all those things. And there just hasn't been rhythm. Um, there hasn't been rhythm the last few weeks. Uh, it has been a lot of three and outs. Sean McDermott says, like, when you're not executing, like, executing, it's kind of like, the, oh, first guy in, last guy out. Like, like it's the cliche of, hey, that, that's what you got to do. You gotta make plays. Players gotta make plays. Yeah. Ken Dorsey's gotta maybe call some better plays and in, in, in design some some more creativity. The Deontay Hardy touchdown last week was phenomenal. Yeah. Amazing execution, play design, and timing, all of those things. But for the rest of it, we talked about it after the game on Sunday night, Monday morning. It, no, nothing seems easy. It, 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 it's in it, mud, like it, you talked it's, about. Yeah. You're slogging through these drives, and you wanna know why a lot of teams don't have eight, nine minute drives? Because they're hard to do and they're not consistent. They're not sustainable they're for not the most part. So, so I, I think this was the first time in a while that Sean McDermott, I thought, showed a little bit of frustration. Yeah. 
we got to do this. We have to be better at this. We have to execute all of these things. We need to get in a rhythm earlier. We need to be able to build off of that stuff. I agree. I think we've watched so many Sean McDermott press conferences, and you really see him kind of hold his cards for the most part. But I felt like today we kind of saw, saw him kind of tip his hand of, like, the frustrations. And a very if you w- were to watch it, I don't really think you would take that away. But yeah. just because we've been around the team so long, you kind of see that side of, like, no, there's definitely frustration there. And the fact that he has a great point. He's like, I've seen this offense be successful. I've seen the Miami week and the Raiders week. We've yep. seen what this team can do. But I get why he's frustrated. I mean, what has Deontay Hardy? He had the nice touchdown. But Trent Sherfield, what are these players adding to this offense? We talk about what they were having coming into the season. And I'm not saying they were going to be the next Stephon Diggs. But these, you brought these players in for their ability. And it's been Diggs, Gabe, that you try and get involved, and then a complete drop-off. Well, and you said that Josh said that the – all the blame pointed at Ken was, is, is misguided. That, 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 that's not all of it. And again, that's why players will say we have to execute. Whenever a play is called, yeah. we have to execute and all those things. But this sense of, of rhythm and, and all those things, like it, it happens when you, when you get a first down and, yeah. and, and you can get a second first down. And, and that's what we're kind of hearing. And look, this team isn't going to panic offensively. No. And, and I don't think there's any massive reason to. But this offense holds themselves to an unrealistically high standard. They have said that their expectation is to score every time they get the ball. Yeah. They've only done that a few times. Once was against New England. So yeah. I remember I, today I asked Dawson Knox that. Like, how, you talk about the rhythm and, and kind of feeding off those first downs and good plays. Mm-hmm. How do you not then get frustrated when your expectations are here? Yeah, that's fair. When you have back-to-back three and outs. Yeah. Momentum goes both ways. You can lack it so much that it, 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 it spirals. Feels impossible. It feels yeah. imp- impossible to, to get it going. And then it could also be, you know, the ball rolling downhill. I always joke around in baseball that hitting is contagious. Scoring points in the NFL is contagious. Yeah. You, you put a drive together, you kick a field goal. Even if it's just a field goal, hey, we put points on the board. Let's yeah. go do it again. Yeah. It's that balancing act. And, and Mitch Morris, we asked him about it today and saying it's not about changing anything right now, which I would like to see some things changed if I'm being, if I'm being honest. But he said it's about doubling down on what they know they do well. And it's about, you know, going more into it. And Trent Sherfield, we also talked to him today. He said that they need to communicate more. And he said that's something that they're very open about the offense is, is, is communicating more. And he goes, we missed some opportunities to communicate last game. And I go back to what I've heard other coaches say in other sports, especially hockey, fast-paced game. You have to constantly be communicating, right? Yeah. The Amherst head coaches talked about how teams that don't communicate are young teams because they're timid. Veteran teams are very confident. You talk more. You're, yeah. you, you just know what to do. Yeah. This offense, again, is where we thought they had an identity through four weeks of the season. They're struggling to find it once again. Yeah. What did Dawson Knox say to you about the expectations being so high and the frustration sometimes setting in? Dawson and great, you know, Sean McDermott cliches. You can't ride the roller coaster. We take it one series at a time, one play at a time, and they try not to get too high, try not to get too low. All these things are great. I understand all of these cliches, next man up, all these things. It's, I guess it, it sometimes it falls on, on deaf ears when you're not having success. And I think for some people we're like, well, it's been a couple, it's been two weeks. I, I think the reason there is such a cause for concern is we saw this at the back half of the Bills season yeah. last year where they did win for the most part, but it felt like that offense was in mud <laughs> like we had talked about. So I think that's why yeah. you start to see these things happen again. It's not, well, it's only been two weeks. If you look and yeah. peel back the page, you're like, well, this is an ongoing it's trend 15, yeah, it's that we've seen. Four, you know, 10 out of the last 14 weeks. I think Josh did a good job of, you know, he kind of made a little crack saying like, oh, there's a lot of offensive coordinators on their couch. He defended his guy. He talked about the trust that he has. Implicit trust. Implicit? Yeah. Implicit trust between him and Ken Dorsey. And he said the fact that, you know, he thinks some of that criticism is misguided. And he talked about him needing to be better, all of these things. Everything I expected Josh to say, Mm -hmm. he did. Um but I think at a certain point, and this feels different to me. I don't know about you, but where we're at in the season and kind of the response and hearing Sean McDermott say what he said today, it feels like a little that that thermometer or that heat check is going up a little bit more. And I think depending on this season, what we see, that's definitely something to pay attention to. I will say, though, the Patriots this week are a nice soft spot to help your offense out. We thought that about the Giants. We did. That's fair. Yeah, we did. So this, look, I, I, do you I, want style points this week? 
Would that I make want, you feel better? I want no punts. Like I said, I thought they would. I thought they wouldn't punt <laughs> okay. last week, and they that was an issue. Yeah. Um, you talk about the, the, the temperature being turned up. I remember a few years ago, it was, I think it was 2018, I asked Sean McDermott his level of frustration with the offense. We got into a little back and forth. Um, oh, it it, yeah. it, it, it kind of is starting to feel like, again, some of these questions were posed to Sean were about players and getting involved in the offense. And Sean talked big picture mm -hmm. and about how everybody needs to get in rhythm and all of these things. I, I just think, again, Sean has taken a lot on his plate and his defense has lost a lot of key players and they are still performing are. at a very, very high level. You are just inserting in a new guy, Dorian Williams, perfect example. Guy comes in, yeah. all of a sudden makes plays. Like if I'm Sean McDermott, I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm holding guys opposing offenses to field goals and I'm 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 doing my thing like yeah can you what are we things doing here? things are going pretty well with your offense you also have Josh freaking Allen yeah like let's figure this out you are no longer a first year head coach your first year offensive coordinator this isn't your first year calling plays yeah. there needs to be better in-game adjustments Sean talked about that again he didn't nothing was singled out towards one coordinator one coach one player it was a big picture thing but you're starting to sense that turned up and again Ken Dorsey kind of seems the next guy to to blame. Yeah. And I have no problem blaming Ken Dorsey as we have on this channel, but it's things are kind of falling on his shoulders. To your next point and the last point, the Patriots stink. I said that about the Giants. Yeah. Patriots stink. No offensive weapons. Their defense yeah. should dominate once again, even if everybody is banged up and injured. Um, it is just very weird that we have now, this is Patriots week and we are at minute 14 of this video and yeah. it's like, oh yeah, they, they play New England. It used to be, you circle these two dates on your calendar, Bills, L's. Patriots as L's, but mm -hmm. also as like, maybe this year the Bills can contend. Maybe this year they'll show some fight. And obviously the last couple of seasons, the Bills have done a good job of putting away New England, but where this Patriots team is at is, is bad and it's unfamiliar territory for them, but they look they do. They look lost, uncoached. Like, it's a not a – I don't want to say not well-coached, but I don't know yeah, if you no. have the talent around. Like, it's just, will Mac Jones, will he finish the game on Sunday? Like, I don't know because I think they're at a desperate point in their season. Yeah, I feel like they've been desperate for the last two years. It just hasn't been good. Um, they don't have very much – talent on the offensive side of the ball. They may be the worst offense talent-wise roster in the NFL. Um, they're not getting very good quarterback play. Their defense is having to carry all of the weight. And defenses, no matter how good they are, you can see the Jets' defense last year with their bad offense. Eventually, defenses just wear out. Yeah. That that you, I, I always remember going back to like the Tebow Bronco era days, where it's like the defense is just like I'm so sick and tired of carrying this team. Yeah. They which just run fair. out. Which yeah. they just run out of gas. Yeah. So that was also the Bills' team for a while too. Um, yeah. This is just the fact of the matter is is that this again while they can say they have all the respect in the world for Bill Belichick and this New England, they always put it as a little caveat of Trent Shurfield said, they've had a lot of success in recent years. They've, and, and they're still a yeah. well-coached team. To me, they come across as hollow words. There is respect. It is the NFL. Okay. I it, think there's absolutely respect, but there's also the recent product that kind of goes against that. Trent Shurfield was talking about how the Jets beat the Eagles and how they were upsets and the Browns beat the, yeah. the Browns beat the, 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 the 49ers. Yeah. And he goes, and we were one of those teams. Like yeah. we were another team that, that got pushed that we found ourselves in a dogfight. Yeah. They have to take it each week by week. Maybe last week was a nice little wake up call that you can't just expect to roll in. Um, but this is not this is not a New England franchise that we have become accustomed to seeing for two decades. They're not good. They're not good. They are not good. All right. Bills. You're going to Foxborough. Yes, I'm going to Foxborough. I haven't checked the weather yet, but hopefully it's, I'm sure nice. it's nice. I'm sure it's I hope nice. it's nice. Your game. That's <laughs> all right. From uh, Dan, I'm Jenna. Teaser ahead. Recurring guest, maybe yes. our favorite recurring guest. Yeah. Video on what they're saying in Foxborough will be out Friday morning. Fan favorite. Yeah. A favorite of ours. Yeah. OG guy. OG. Will be on the show. Very excited. All right, for Dan, I'm Jenna. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the Buffalo Plus store, buffaloplusstore.com. For the two of us, we'll send it back to Mike in, in the studio. I don't know. We're just going to ad lib here. All right, we'll see you next time on Buffalo Plus. Mike in the studio. I don't know.
Buffalo Plus, your interactive look at the week in football, brought to you by Connors and Ferris.